welcome to my channel. We are out riding today. Hopefully do a 30 mile ride again today and I'll be also incorporating some drone footage as well. Today we are riding the Cyresher Ovia. It's my 20 by 4 inch fat tire bike. It's got a 750 watt, 52 volt, 17 amp hour uh, battery. Today we're going to be talking about uh, some uh, upcoming bike laws again and what you guys think about all the changes that are probably coming and I mentioned this before it's inevitable there's going to be regulations come down on these bikes I see it happening sooner than later. And uh, one of the main reasons that the bike laws are, are going to happen is because there's a big generation of um, e-bikers, I would say from 35 to 50 years old, maybe a little younger, that are now riding these things more. And all they want to do is see speed. They just want these companies to make them faster and faster. And uh, as a senior, I'm not wanting that at all. So uh, yeah, that's coming. I'm gonna pause the camera here just a bit. I'm gonna get my drone out and uh, get that thing uh, flying here so I can get some more drone footage as well. We were talking about the um, laws that are coming, going to be coming out in a lot of states, and they're in, they're passing their way through legislation now in the states, through the House, and uh, it's going to take a while to get through the Senate as well, but it will, and there's going to be changes going to be done as well. But I'm telling you, speed's going to kill these uh, e-bike companies if they keep making these bikes faster as they are. People are. Uh, going to be buying a lot of them and they're going to be banned from these trails. So I see that coming. Again, the uh, major age group of people is 50 and under is really wanting faster bikes where somebody at 72 like myself, we don't want faster bikes. We want better components on the bike. We want um, dependability of the bike, how well it's made and we want range on the battery. Those are some of the three things that we're looking for. So yeah, just because uh, they can go faster don't mean they're safer. And again, I see these kids out here, especially riding with no helmet, makes no sense to me. Of course, when I was young like that, I don't know, I never rode a motorcycle in my life, maybe once, but uh, it wasn't one of my things, so. I know that's important to these, some of these kids that they just go faster and faster, so that's going to cause a problem with these uh, regulations. I see that coming for sure. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and stop this view uh, right here and uh, we'll continue it, continue the discussion on it and uh, yeah, we'll pick it right back up here once I uh, change the view of the drone here because I really don't want to get fly it through this intersection up here because may not make it across the intersection as well so yeah
in this new mode here, I can get the camera to come back. All I got to do is go like this, and the camera knows to come back right in, so you can see it on my other camera here. It's pretty cool. Again, we got it on the side track. And yeah, what we're basically talking about on these laws is uh, a lot of these states are now uh, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Oregon, and I'm sure California is already working on it as well. They're going to write legislation where there's certain things that uh, are going to impede uh, us riding these bikes on bike trails primarily. You have three uh, classes of bikes, class one, two, and three. And anything above 28 mile an hour, you're actually uh, beyond all three of those classes, which means that it's really not legal to ride on a uh, bike trail. So class one, you've got uh, throttle only. In class two, you can uh, get up to 20 mile an hour. And class three is uh, actually up to 28 mile an hour. And uh, you go beyond that with these faster bikes, you're really going to limit how you can ride your bike, shall I say. You know, I, I ride the bike trail an awful lot, but I also ride the uh, road quite a bit too. Of course, I won't be doing any drone coverage on, the, on roads at all. That's just not safe. But today, I think we're going to uh, ride down to, uh, I call Eastwood Park. It is a place I can do some drone footage out in the wide open and uh, get off the bike and talk about the uh, OV a little bit. But yeah, let me know what you guys kind of think about what would you like to see on these bikes? I mean, 750 watt is really all you're supposed to have on the uh, bike trails, as far as uh, watt motors. Where my juice now is a thousand watt motor and really we shouldn't be uh, riding on the trails with that because it's, it's actually limited to 750. So yeah, the uh, laws are coming guys, I'm telling you. It, now, it may take a year or two before it gets through legislation in some of these states, but after that, it's just going to be a snowball effect, as you guys well know. The rest of these states are just going to fall right into line like dominoes. So I kind of see that happening. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and stop the footage right here. on. The but yeah, spring is about to sprung here, I think. it. Uh, all the trees now are starting to get buds on them, so... We're getting there. I've got my tomatoes under grow lights in the uh, garage that I grew from seed. I'll also be setting up a new studio here in my garage with some green screen effects. So I'm hoping you guys like the new uh, footage that I'm going to be uh, bringing out. I'm going to have to hang some of the uh, screens from my rafters. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm in along pretty good at 20 mile an hour here. I've got my um, GoPro camera on my backpack strap again, as you noticed. Good morning, everyone. We're doing the uh, dolly track now. Drain is going to stay out in front of me as I'm uh, recording. And we're going to begin still talking about uh, what seniors want on uh, e-bikes. What are they looking for? Now, with that said, most seniors, and I wouldn't say a lot of seniors, but the majority of seniors have disposable income to buy these bikes. 
Now, that's not all the case with some people, but there are some budget bikes under $1,000 for you seniors that I would highly recommend. You know, there, there's bikes out there that uh, are well worth the money at $1,000. So when you think you can't find a bike out there, they're out there. And uh, put it down in the comments section and uh, let me know if you want me to list some bikes that I highly recommend. And I will uh, see if I can do that for you. I'll link some uh, bikes that I have that uh, they got they sent to me to review. And I'll give you guys a good uh, idea of what's out there on a budget bike. Good quality components. Where they've got uh, hydraulic brakes on them. They've got suspension. Uh, they have them in folding and non-folding. So there are different style bikes out there. But yeah, I'll be glad to link some stuff down there for you folks. And, uh, yeah, now the only problem is when you buy a bike online, unless it's uh, here in the United States, if you're local here in the United States, shall I say, most of these bikes are built in China. Actually, most, almost all of them are now. So... You got to keep that in mind when you're looking for a uh, a bike. You may want to go to a local bike shop first in order to make that purchase. Because if you are going out to uh, ordering the bike online, you may not get any local support to help you with that bike if something happens to it where you need it worked on. So I always recommend on your first e-bike, till you guys get familiar with what you're purchasing that you uh, go to a local bike shop that sells them. You may pay a little more, but you're still going to get a better bike because the, they're local there to support you if the bike needs worked on. So keep that in mind on your first e-bike. Um, just because a bike's priced at twenty four to $3,000, dollars $3, don't mean it's the best bike out there for you. You get down around the thirteen to fifteen hundred dollar range. That is a sweet spot for uh, bikes. Well, my drone just took a hit with the wind there. As you can see, the footage may have uh, changed a little bit there. I'm trying not to ride too fast, where this thing is going to just get crazy on me. So, but yeah, shipping. Uh, most companies now have free shipping as well. So. Of course, you're paying for that. Trust me, it's it's in the price, but you're paying for it. And a lot of times, when you get these bikes uh, in, there you got damage on them from the shipping. So if it's coming out of China, you got to get it across the ship, and then you've got to get all these trucking companies that they just don't take uh, good care of these bikes when they're when they're shipping them. And I can use one company in particular. FedEx is terrible. I've had. Damage at least on two or three bikes so far that uh, FedEx has shipped to me. I've watched these drivers flip them things around in the trucks to get them off upside down from what the bike says, and they just don't care. So you got to keep those things in mind uh, when you're getting a bike shipped. I'd say 90% of the bikes, if not more, are shipped to FedEx. They're not shipped to uh, UPS or anything like that. Now, I did have a trucking company deliver one bike for me, so that does happen. They do use ship, uh, shipping companies to uh, deliver your bike. And I've had bikes where I got in, the controller was completely bad, or not the controller, the uh, battery charger didn't work at all when I bought it. I had to go and order one on Amazon until I got a hold of the company to send me one. So you'll see a lot of that when you're uh, opening up the box. You know, you just got to make sure all the parts are in there. Uh, read the manual, of course, before you really start assembling that bike. Now, with us uh, creators, we've done enough of these bike assembles that uh, they're pretty much standard on most bikes. There's not a whole lot of difference on uh, assembling a bike. Some's got the tires already on them. All you got to do is put the stem of the handlebars on. There's a couple companies out there. The bike is completely assembled. 
All you got to do is turn the handlebars around on a few of the bikes. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of things that uh, you don't have to do, or you do have to do, depending on the uh, bike you're getting delivered. On the derailleurs, I still fail to see a lot of these uh, companies put uh, derailleur guards that they can put over the derailleur. So if you dump that bike, you're not going to tear the derailleur up. That's a pet peeve of mine. As far as fenders, though, I don't care if they're plastic or steel. That really is insignificant to me as far as that choice. That really doesn't matter. I guess with uh, metal fenders, you're going to get a little more uh, weight on the bike, and that's what they're trying to uh, keep down. And they're also trying to keep down the price of the build on the bike, so they're going to go with classic fenders for the most part. Anyway, let's go ahead and stop the video right here. Um, coming up on an intersection, I don't want that drone to lose me, so yeah. We're going to get it to land here and uh, 